Case uh, six. Sounds good. So from this power, we can see some PEH, pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia. Very good. Down, and then some inflammation below it. Yes. Be a hair follicle there. Mm hmm And some giant cells. Mm -hmm. Let's start to see some giant cells. Maybe a lot of lymphocytes. Yep. And as we go closer, we can see EOs. And I wouldn't like jump to thinking that this is like pus necessarily. I, I, yeah, for some reason, I, I have a hard time making out the neutrophils in this one. But um. you know, like this one doesn't have a ton of neutrophils. It might have a few, but really, it's um, more lymphocytes and histiocytes. So I agree. Normally, we say this pattern is. PEH plus pus, so pseudoepithelioma is hyperplasia, this reactive epidermal change that can look almost like carcinoma, plus neutrophils. But in this case, the neutrophils are really not very many, so that's okay. But the diagnosis is still what? There we have our carcinodomycosis. Yeah, very good. So this, this pattern, when we see either PEH plus plus neutrophils, plus pus, or PEH with granulomas, we always right away want to think of infection, right? And there are other things in the differential too. But when I this pattern is particularly common in a variety of different infections, particularly deep fungal infections in the skin. And some fungi produce this pattern. This is coccidiotomycosis from coccidioides imidus infection. Um, uh, other other um, types of fungus like blastomycosis can produce this this pattern as well, and uh, pheohyphomycosis, chromoblastomycosis. Some fungus does not usually produce this pattern. Cryptococcus, when it involves the skin, does not generally create an epidermal hyperplasia like this for, for some reason. So uh, let's look at the other pieces, see if there was more, were more neutrophils over here. No, not really. But, but the, seeing the granulomas, and there's some necrosis with the granulomas, and there's inflammation with the granulomas, lymphocytes, plasma cells. I find that neutrophils plus granulomas, infection till proven otherwise. Um, you know, although we saw in that case of ruptured cyst, there were neutrophils there, but that wasn't infection. But still, if I see granulomas and neutrophils, right away I'm thinking of infection. Also, if I see a lot of plasma cells around granulomas, that's kind of a soft clue for, for infectious etiology. So these kind of cases, you hunt around, you can look on H&E because sometimes even without a, bug, uh, um, a fungal stain, you can find the organisms. Otherwise, we would do uh, a fungal stain and probably also an acid fast bacillus stain like the fight stain. So in this case, the organisms are here. The, this round empty cyst, this is uh, the, the uh, cyst of coccidioides. And inside the cyst are lots of little endospore uh, organisms like little tiny dots. They almost never look like little tiny dots uh, on the microscope uh, that I have at least. They usually look kind of like this slightly grainy, mushy, bluish purple stuff. And so sometimes the little endospores are still inside the cyst and sometimes the cyst is empty like this. So the key to recognizing how do you know that's actually like a fungal organism? Well, you can do a fungal stain like GMS or PAS, but also see the double layer wall and under a light microscope, uh, an actual microscope, not digital, if you flip the condenser, you can see the refractile nature of the wall. It's kind of like thick, and so it looks a little bit 3D when you flip the condenser. That's what refractile means, or at least that's my simple way to explain it. Um, here's another one there. So the organisms may be very sparse, so you got to hunt around. They often are in the, in the middle of the granulum, in the middle of the giant cells. Look at that giant cell. It is truly giant. That's huge. And then sometimes it can actually get trapped up into the pseudoepitheliomus hyperplasia and even like perforate out of the epidermis and be present in the stratum corneum. So here's one in the middle of like one of these kind of cystic invaginations of the epidermis. And sometimes you'll like find it up here. I don't think in this case. But so there's like, you know, four or five organisms there. You, you have to hunt around a little bit sometimes to find it. And that's why also if we don't find infectious organisms, but we see a pattern that looks really worrisome for infection, I'll say, I did special stains, but I didn't find organisms, but I will tell the dermatologist, I still think this is concerning for infection, and I'd recommend you do a, 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 you know, a repeat biopsy for cultures if, if the lesion comes back or if there's still residual lesion left. So uh, it's important to recognize that special stains are great, 
and and even better when we can find the organisms on H and E. But sometimes if we don't have if we don't find organisms, but the pattern still looks worrisome for infection, cultures are the important thing to do because uh, cultures can sometimes identify organisms even when none are seen on special stains. But in this case, no special stain was even needed. The organisms are right there. So coccidioides, something that I basically never see in my practice because I've never practiced in the American Southwest. Uh, like uh, these are from the areas like in Arizona or in the San Joaquin Valley area in California. Um, and they're soil dwelling um, a fungus that can infect the lungs or the skin or other parts of the body. All right. Coccidioides.